This is D with a really special Age of Aquarius Spiritual Path Tarot reading for December the 20th. I was guided to do this reading and I'm guided to do a lot more today and tomorrow. The winter solstice tomorrow just happens to land on a moon day. Goddess Day. <sighs> Something very interesting. The lottery drawing for Powerball last night. The Powerball was, guess what? Number 13. That's no accident. That's the number of the goddess. Back in June, these cards led me to pay attention to the 20th and 21st. Saturn moved into Aquarius back on the 17th and is exalted in Aquarius. Jupiter is moving in now. And handing over the reins. The rain. Literally. Not R not R A I N. Remember words can have two meanings. Rain as in rulership. The dark age ruled by Gabriel and Adonai is over. Officially. The reins are being handed over to the goddess. And it is official, this whole ramp up this year. The trials that we've all gone through are leading us on this path. Jupiter and Saturn are at zero degrees. Let me pull this up. By the way, the moon will be in its first quarter tomorrow at 5.41 p.m. Central Time. U.S. Ah. <sighs> Another interesting number that popped up in the Powerball numbers was 27. I always told everybody. And it was the first number drawn besides the Powerball itself. Told everybody I'm eternally 27. Well, that was the Powerball number. The first one pulled out of that line of numbers. Fascinating. Hmm. Anyway, so today, 1531 GMT, Saturn and Jupiter are both at zero degrees. Pluto and Saturn are basically and have been on either side of Jupiter, squashing his power. Basically keeping him in a lock, so to speak, so that this transformation can happen uninterrupted. So, something else that's very interesting about the current transits. <sighs> Mercury is in Capricorn. It just so happens that my Capricorn is Mercury. People ask, what's your Mercury? It is Capricorn. 
and it is in Capricorn currently at 29 degrees along with, guess what? Adonai, the sun, at 29 degrees as well, right now. You can't make that up. Venus has entered the sign of Sagittarius, my rising sign. And the North and South Node are both at 19 degrees, which is a completion. One and nine is a 10. It's a completion and a new beginning. Something else that's very interesting right now. The moon and Neptune are sitting in Gemini. Or Pisces, I'm sorry. In Pisces. Hmm. Interesting lineup. And then you have another very interesting lineup. Black Moon Lilith and Uranus are together at six degrees in Taurus. Can't make that up either. This place is made of numbers. It is a machine. Yeah. Fascinating lineup happening right now. Interesting how the lottery numbers are uh, picking up on the energy. <laughs> wow. It's quite impressive, actually if you think about it. <sighs> a special kind of reading for a special kind of day. And they want me to start with Kuan Yin. <sighs> wow. By the way, went to go pick my husband up and I was telling him about Saturn being exalted in Aquarius and synchronicity. He decided he wanted to get a hamburger and some ice cream after work. And we pulled up in the drive through and confirmation happened. A vehicle that's no longer even made was directly in front of us. A Saturn. A Saturn view. Mm -hmm. Make that up. Synchronicities are all around us. Also, yesterday morning when we walked outside, he now said, I think I hear an owl. And it wasn't an owl, it was a morning dove. Gotta pay attention to the signs. They're all around us. <laughs> I had an interesting dream last night about little jumping spiders. The ones, um, I don't know if you've ever seen the nature videos of the little spiders that do dances, elaborate dances with bright colors. They're little jumping spiders, they're very cute. I had a dream last night of a purple one doing little dances, several of them. <laughs> Super cute. Super cute. All right. I've had some other visions too, but nothing I want to speak on. But yeah. <clears throat> some things I got to take care of in the astral. Ah. <laughs> uh, all right, so for today, the energy for today with the planetary lineups, let's see what they got to tell everybody down here on missions. What do we need to know? <laughs> okay, first card. For the reading, your enlightened heart. Let's look at that picture. That's beautiful. I do love this deck. Your enlightened heart. 
The wish of the Divine Mother is that you become free. <laughs> you can't make that up. Holy shit. <laughs> Whenever I do my rituals, my main focus is setting you all free. It always has been. Always will be. <laughs> I'm totally shitting myself right now. Oh, I can't even tell you. <laughs> ah, as Gabriel says, holy shit on a stick, or holy poop on a stick, actually, is his exact phrasing. <laughs> holy poop on a stick. <sighs> Enlightenment is a culmination of many small steps. Oh my gosh, and that is no joke. Each one as a drop of water forming a divine ocean of peace, realization, love, and unity within. An ocean that washes away fear, separation, and scarcity, and bathes us in abundance and bliss. <laughs> you carry the torch of enlightenment within your heart. Let it shine the Divine Mother. She's shining in the sky as above, so below. That star in the southwest at dusk is a brand new beginning for this planet and those on it. And there we go with the heartbeat again on the camera. It's getting so profound, and I'm in tears again. Tears in the corner of my eyes, just like the moon card, crying tears, yods, for the planet. <laughs> wow. Okay. I'm going to try to keep it together. Aquarius does not show emotions, so this is... Here we go with the heartbeat again. This is extremely profound. It's a wonderful new day for everybody here. <sighs> All right. And we'll do the same thing I always do with these cards. The one that really shines. <laughs> this is it. <sighs> yeah, that's it. <sighs> that's our card. Don't know what it says. Let's find out. That one below it. It's beautiful. That's our card for today. Here we go. Do not give in to fear and doubt. Courage is called for now. Face your fear. Look at things objectively. You are safe and all is well. Fill your fear with love. Beyond fear, love is guiding you, urging you to break free. You will succeed. We will all succeed at breaking free. <sighs> wow. They want two more cards. Oh. 
All is possible when your heartfelt vision is in alignment with your values. Believe in your dream. Love it, breathe it, and let it fill your thoughts. But you must take action also. Work towards a little each day until it becomes your primary action. Dreams are first in vision. Oh, I got a sick kitty. Did you eat too fast? Yeah, he was just eating too fast. <laughs> what timing? <laughs> Dreams are first in vision, but then they must be built. You will succeed if you work at it. We will work at it and we will succeed. And this one. <clears throat> they usually only have me take one card, but they're having me do more. It is not a matter of containing your emotions. Rather, the opposite is required. Okay, I'm listening. You must express your emotions in order to heal them. Say what you feel. Be gentle, be truthful, and do not blame anyone in the process, especially yourself. All emotions can be transformed by love. A conscious desire to do so is all it takes. It's okay to feel the way you do. And one more. <clears throat> this card. An enchanted world is available to you if you want it. Just as the oak tree is hidden in its seed, the goddess is within you. Reason devoid of feeling is merely harsh judgment. So listen to your heart and move beyond the boundaries you have placed around yourself. It's time to step into your power and create a world of bliss. <sighs> They're talking at me directly again, but also wise words for all of you. Wow. This is a momentous day. Very momentous day. <sighs> I may have to go back and listen to this again. <laughs> but they're telling me green light go. It's time. For today, please. No. Yes. Oh, smoke and mirrors. Mm -hmm. Card 42, Smoke and Mirrors. This is to remind us that everything here is smoke and mirrors. It's all an illusion. A one grand illusion. 
Oh my gosh, the album Grand Illusion sticks. The overall energy for today. <clears throat> overall energy for today. fortune, the wheel of destiny is the overall energy, it is a 10, it is completion and a new beginning. <sighs> Gage of Aquarius is official. Remember, this looks like the Mayan calendar to me, this, and that's how they gave me the heads up about the 20th and 21st, this card. <laughs> Something that never, I never noticed on this card, these, um, the weighing of the scales. That is the overall energy. <sighs> What's our highest priority? <laughs> the seeker, spirit in search of science. The Corrupter and Archangel of Healing. Wow. <sighs> okay. And what do we need to be mindful of and or prepare for? The burdened one, the reaper, and the sharpshooter. <sighs> major energy going on there. We have major arcana in every pile. And major arcana on the bottom. Remember I pointed out those scales stood out to me? Guess what? They're here. It's the underlying energy. Lady Justice, key 11. Don't fear the 11s. <sighs> it's the underlying energy for the reading. Let's move that there. <clears throat> Pick these up. <sighs> wow. Major Arcana in every slot. It's a big day. <laughs> the memory keeper. <laughs> yeah, the memory keeper. Past lives. Justice. 
the balance will be restored down here. Just like the prophecy says, there's a woman that comes forward and balances out when evil becomes too prevalent and balances everything. And that is the underlying energy. This is a spirit, <clears throat> or this spirit represents recertification measures that counter karmic consequences. It is the spirit guiding you toward balanced judgment and making clear decisions. Do not judge based on appearances. Choose balanced action, balanced words, and balanced thought. When the Chancellor appears to you, it is a call to make the necessary adjustments so that you might restore balance. The Angel of Justice arrives when all considerations have been duly weighed and the resulting outcome of the choices you've made, your actions, and your speech have now been determined. Key 11 marks that point when the truth comes out. The scales of your life are about to get tipped so that balance can be maintained. Yes, they are getting tipped. The oppression, subjugation, and tyranny is over. She carries that sword of truth and clarity. And I want everybody to remember your hearts will be weighed against feathers. So you want to keep your hearts light, okay? Your enlightened hearts, okay? The overall energy, key 10, completion, the wheel of life. When key 10 appears to you, you are at a major turning point in your life. This is the symbol of changing cycles, and even the cycles of our mind, how we change our perspectives based on the evolution of our experiences. This is also our karma and the law of causation. This is the guardian spirit present during a major shift in your life. <sighs> Huge shift because of justice. Seeker, spirit in search of science. <sighs> this is our highest priority. The seeker is the fool who seeks answers, who seeks to know. This is you in search of specific guidance. Your highest priority is seeking the rose. The rose signifies the goddess. Highest priority. <clears throat> the corruptor, seven of chalices. The corruptor is the master of sophistry. Superficially, your current reasoning seems plausible, but it is fallacious. The corruptor is a spirit who appears to you now as a threshold guardian, cautioning you to redirect yourself. The corrupter personifies the pursuit of wisdom that derails into folly, wealth that leads to poverty, and sowing the seeds uh, that become desolation, seeking dominance but finding subjugation. It is peace that becomes war or well-intentioned grace that becomes ugliness. The corrupter is illusionary success and wishful thinking. You are dreaming big, but acting small. The enchanted world is available if you want it. That's a big dream. That's a huge dream. It's my dream. We see the allegory of the seven sins. The pig is gluttony. The snake is envy. Peacock for pride, snail for sloth, lion for wrath, toad for avarice, and the goat for lust. Do not act on impulse. When the corrupter appears to you, rethink that idea you've been contemplating. It may not be prudent. 
Also, pay closer scrutiny to your environment. There are poisons around. The seven of chalices is falsehood appearing as truth. This spirit appearing to you is a warning that mis misleading perceptions abound. <sighs> but I feel like it's dreaming big but acting small. I'm ready to dream really big. <clears throat> Archangel of Healing. Angel who salves and purifies. The King of Chalices is the Archangel of Healing, a reigning angel over the healing arts and purification of mind, body, and soul. She presents herself to you now to guide you through precarious times, and she is here by your side to salve, to heal, and to purify what is currently diseased, debilitated, feeble, or unwell. This angel appears to those her, who most need healing. She has a tender place in her heart for those who are like fish out of water, caring for them the most. Here is the spirit guide for mending your wounds. And that's our highest priority. Possibly the healing, a king of cups that has been poisoned, the fool. <sighs> okay, I know what that's about. That's about one of the things I couldn't talk about. And what do we need to be mindful of and or prepare for? The burdened one, ten of scepters. Another completion card, tens, right? The spirit resident in this card is the carrier of sorrows. The burden one is oppression we bring onto ourselves when we don't temper or when we have acquiesced to others using us as their beast of burden. The series of decisions you have made along the way have led to this culminating point of unduly carrying the responsibility of others. Are the hands of spirit holding the rods to help you carry the weight of the load, or are the hands of spirit presenting the burden to you to test your strength, resolve, and perseverance? Is this a divine trial or divine assistant? assistance? The mystic rose at the center between the hands symbolize a secret, a mystery indicating that you don't know everything. There are greater reasons for why you are where you are. There is purpose, and you are not yet privy to what that purpose is. The Ten of Scepters is the card of laborious task. Thirteen, the number of the goddess, the reaper, passage to initiation. Major Arcana. Lucium Sycamore, follow the light. You're being guided through an initiation phase, and the suffering you experience serves a greater divine purpose. A change that you know in your heart is imminent, but have been denying is the change that you will face. The Reaper appears to you when the circumstances you face call for this gentle reminder. All is not fair to the human perception. You toil for the bread of life until sweat seize from your brow, and yet that life will be taken away no matter who you are or what you have done. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, that is the purpose and the absence of purpose to human genesis. Endure through the difficult changes to come, and when those winds of change have settled, you will find yourself better for it. There will be a rebirth after this death.
And the sharpshooter. It acceptors incoming fast messages. Swift movement abounds around you. This is a spirit of marksmanship. When the eight of scepters appears, it bears notice to pay attention to messages being directed at you coming from your world. For spirit is presenting itself through the words of those speaking to you. The eight of scepters is a spirit of inbound tidings that bear your name. When the sharpshooter appears in a tarot spread, pay attention to what she is aiming and shooting at in context of the spread's landscape. What she points at is what spirit is directing you to pay attention to. The sharpshooter might be appearing to you as a protege of Anat, an old Canaanite maiden goddess of war. She might also be a messenger from Artemis. Perhaps she is a priestess daughter of Minerva or Pallas Athena. The sharpshooter is the eight of scepters, is the spirit off called upon to be an emissary into our world to deliver messages from a divine feminine, embodying courage, wisdom, military strategy, war, and battles, or a patron goddess of the arts. When the sharpshooter appears to you, such a divine consciousness is calling to you. So, incoming messages from the world around us, it will cause burden and transformation. <sighs> Divine trials. Whew. All right. So let the trials begin, right? Because we will have justice. The overall energy is a big cycle changing over right now into the age of Aquarius. Okay. So that's our messages. And remember what the card said at the beginning. We have a big job ahead of us, but it's not impossible. <laughs> anyway, remember, you are loved beyond your wildest comprehensions and you will be set free. Bank on it. <laughs>